Now, we've all been waiting for these Navi GPUs ever since the benevolent Lisa Su showed it off during this year's E3. Now that it's finally here, let's find out if they bend the rules and exceed our expectations, or will they actually just be super seeded by Nvidia's newest lineup? Get it? So earlier this month, while celebrating their 50th anniversary, AMD introduced the RX 5000 series graphics cards, which brought along the much-anticipated Navi or RDNA architecture, with redesigned compute units for improved efficiency. This new series of GPUs will be the second to feature TSMC's cutting-edge 7 nanometer process after the Radeon 7, but it will be the first to utilize the brand spanking new PCIe 4.0 that came with the third-generation Ryzen launch. Spearheading this launch, we have the RX 5700 and the RX 5700 XT. Before we get into it, you guys should be really familiar with the RTX Supercards, which launched just two days after the RX 5000 series. Now, we've just finished benchmarking our RTX 2060 and 2070 Supercards, hence this very late review, but better late than never. Let's get Cracking. As you guys might be aware, AMD implemented a price cut on these bad boys. The Radeon RX 5700 was launched at 379 US dollars. Now it's only 349 US dollars or 1,659 ringgit. For the Radeon RX 5700 XT though, it was launched at 449 US dollars. Now only 399 US dollars or 1,859 ringgit. In terms of aesthetics, it seems that AMD is going for a minimalist approach with these two cards. They are pretty similar. For starters, they both adopt single fan blower type coolers that push hot air out via vents at the back I.O., black PCBs, and a dual expansion slot design. The dimensions of these cards are pretty similar as well at 270mm long and 110mm wide with the Radeon RX 5700 XT being 5mm thicker at 40mm. Both these cards feature a unibody aluminum shroud design that provides quite a bit of rigidity. However, with the Radeon RX 5700 XT, AMD certainly bent the rules by introducing a three-dimensional curve in the middle, accentuated by fine groove lines which resembles a topographic map. At the back, the RX 5700 XT also comes with a sleek back plate which the RX 5700 lacks. Unfortunately, neither cards feature RGB lighting but the RX 5700 XT does have a red illuminated logo at the side. If you want RGB, you're gonna have to wait for the custom cards which should be dropping shortly. In terms of connectivity, both cards use a 6 plus 8 pin configuration for PCIe power delivery. For the back I.O., they both have 3 DisplayPort 1.4 and a single HDMI 2.0. Let's take a look at the specs for these bad boys. First things first, the architecture is now the RDNA 1.0 versus the GCN 4.0 from the Polaris cards. The process is now the brand spanking new 7 nanometer process versus the 40 nanometer process on the RX 570 and 580 or the RX 590's 12 nanometer process. Apparently, it's supposed to deliver 1.25 times performance per clock compared to the 40 nanometer process. The transistor count is almost double at 10.3 billion. Die size is slightly bigger at 251 millimeter square. The stream processors for the RX 5700 is the same as the RX 590. However, the RX 5700 XT now has 2560 stream processors. Compute units in terms of the numbers pretty much the same except for four more on the 5700 XT. The base clock for the RX 5700 is actually pretty much the same as the RX 590. However, the RX 5700 XT now has 1605 mega hertz for the base clock and in terms of boost clock we've seen quite a bit of an increment for the rx 5700 it is now at 1725 megahertz but the rx 5700 xt now has a 1905 megahertz for the boost clock memory size is pretty much the same at 8 gigabytes the memory bus is also the same at 256 bit memory type is now the gddr6 versus the gddr5 from the previous generation. Memory speed is a whopping 14 gigabits per second, which is quite a bit faster 
than the 7 or 8 gigabits per second from the Polaris cards. Memory bandwidth is almost double at 448 versus 224 on a 570 or 256 on a 580 and 590. In terms of ROPs, we are looking at 64 versus the 32 from the Polaris cards, so that's double. In terms of texture units, the RX 5700 has the same amount at 144 with the 580 and 590, but the RX 5700 XT has 160 texture units. The power connectors have also shifted from the single connector, either 6 or 8 pin from the Polaris cards to a 6 plus 8 pin for both these cards. In terms of TDP though, the RX 5700 has 180 watts versus the 185 from the 580, while the 5700 XT has the same TDP as the RX 590. What this means is that AMD has improved the efficiency of these cards and we shouldn't need such a hefty thermal design to dissipate all the heat from these cards, so kudos. So the MSRP for these cards at launch even after the price cut is quite a bit more than the Polaris cards. However, I can argue that AMD is now aiming for a higher benchmark with their GPUs. So I'll let you be the judge of that after we show you the numbers. Moving on to our test bench for the processor, we're using the latest AMD Ryzen 7 3700X. For the cooler, we're sticking with the stock cooler that came with the processor. For the motherboard, we're using the X570 Aorus Master. For memory, we chose the G-Skill Triton Z Royal Series 2x8GB DDR4, rated at 3600MHz at 1.35V. For the storage, we're using the brand spanking new 2TB Aorus NVMe M.2 Gen 4 SSD. Finally, for the power supply, we're using the Thermotech Tough Power IRGB plus 1250 watts 80 plus titanium PSU. Moving on to the numbers. The final word, compared to previous generations where AMD was just playing at the low end kiddie pool, now they have two graphics cards that have taken a huge step towards the right direction. The numbers are pretty promising with the RX 5700 and 5700 XT performing better than the vanilla RTX 2060 and 2070 graphics cards. The RTX Super cards will take the lead for now, but the RX 5700 XT actually performs pretty close to the RTX 2070 Super in terms of gaming performance. When it boils down to it, Though, these cards still run pretty hard even when we were running them on our test bench with the air conditioning on full blast. However, we should see that rectified as soon as the custom PCBs and designs come to market. Now the real question is just how important real-time ray tracing is to you. Keep in mind though that AMD also offers comparative features such as the Fidelity FX, Anti-Lag and the surprisingly excellent Radeon image sharpening, kind of like Nvidia's DLSS with one major advantage and that is that you're not restricted to any resolution like the DLSS depending on your card's make and also your game. In fact, if you go with an odd resolution such as 1800p 
and turn on RIS, you can get the image quality to be very similar to native 4K. It is the closest that I've personally experienced. While we did not encounter any major bugs or hiccups during the testing of these cards, I believe that AMD still has a lot of work cut out for them seeing that these are the first RDNA GPUs, they will have to see a few more driver updates to see the full potential in them. We're glad to see that AMD is still keeping up the fight to get to the top, but the competition is already far ahead in the high-end department. Still, it's good to see some competition as far as tech is concerned so that us, the consumers, can have the best value for cutting-edge technology. If you thought this video was awesome, please give us a like, subscribe, leave a comment down below to let us know what you think about these RX 5000 graphics cards. Are they a disappointment? Are you excited to see what new models AMD will push out in the future with the Navi architecture? Don't forget to hit the notification bell to see more content like this and we'll see you in the next one. Well, we did not encounter any major bugs.